We're trying to protect ourselves against heart disease in our 50s and 60s, cancer in our 60s and 70s, and Alzheimer's after that, right? The fundamental goal of Fountain Life is actually to start this transition from reactive episodic sick care to proactive uh, health care, and in the process, hopefully, uh, build a new ecosystem around healthcare. And the way we do that at Fountain Life is we need to know, number one, what is your baseline? Because the traditional sick care system is just waiting till you break, and then we're coming to the rescue with all kinds of therapies and, and modalities. So at Fountain, uh, you know, some of this is, is what a lot of you have done through HLI in the past, but we've actually accelerated that, added new technology to it. And then we talk about, you know, how we not only find out what your the baseline is through what you know we talk about is your health upload, which uh, is precision diagnostics. And uh, it's things that we've been talking about uh, for a while, and you guys are familiar with it. It's whole body MRI, looking at genetics, looking at blood biomarkers, the mammogram of the heart with clearly AI, uh, starting to look at multiple parameters. And, and as we find new technologies, uh, whether it be Arc Bio and some of these new technologies that are available, we'll bring those into the ecosystem. So it's this idea that we will scour the world looking for the very best technology to, number one, find out what your baseline is, and then the next step is optimization. So what does that mean? There's a lot of common optimizations people are familiar with. It can be bioidentical hormones, it can be peptide therapies. Uh, and then we actually accelerate that even further as we move into Nutrition, strength training is a core portion of this. We really like muscle uh, strength training because we know that muscle mass is critical to longevity. And then beyond that, it's using technologies that Bob has pioneered with the Sentinel Matrix to look at regenerative technologies. And so the idea is to put all of these under one roof so that you can have a health upload. We find out what your baseline is, then we can use the technologies to use performance optimization, recovery, and then the third pillar really is actually using regenerative medicine to accelerate you into that next 100 years. Yeah, so that's, that's the, the baseline vision. What's going on with you? We're all optimists. We have actually no idea what's going on inside our bodies right now. I, I, I can't stress that enough. We're all optimists, but you think you're fine until you have a pain in the side and you end up in the ER and the doctor is saying, I'm sorry, the MRI, the CAT scan. Right, so I go every year, I do an upload. I love the term that Michael, Dr. Gillum gave us of uploading 150 gigabytes of data about me. And I feel naked if I don't have that upload every year. Like, what might be going on? Eventually, the upload will be continuous throughout the year. Right, it will be sensors on your body, in your body. So that's the baseline. And we're gonna talk about three other things, uh, found OS, um, which Dr. Gillum is developing, Fountain Health Insurance, and Fountain Edge, which uh, Dr. Shapiro has been developing. So let's, let's jump into, in the baseline capability, what are the diagnostics that we're covering? Right, so some of these uh, you guys are familiar with, but we're looking at a whole body MRI where we do 10,000 slices, looking at you know, everything from head to about you know, your entire body, head to toe, looking at 10,000 slices. And then we actually use artificial intelligence algorithms to start to look at your brain health. And we saw some of that discussion with Rudy Tanzi. We don't do a PET scan, we do an MRI, but the point here is to try to find out what your hippocampal occupancy score is. And if you guys remember, that's kind of where a lot of this neurodegeneration starts its, its effect. So we can start to quantify white matter lesions, uh, your hippocampal occupancy score, other measures that we can do to kind of tell you what your brain health is. And then we start to look at your entire body for body composition, liver fat analysis. Are there any little small areas that may be cancerous? Uh, those are things that we start to pick up. And then the second part of this is your, what we call the mammogram of the heart. It's new technology. Once again, we're trying to solve this clinical latency gap, meaning the time that technology is ready until the time we can offer it to you so that we're always on the cutting edge. And this mammogram of the heart was pioneered at Cornell uh, by Dr. James uh, Min, and it's fantastic technology. And it is the mammogram of the heart because instead of uh, guessing uh, what your uh, you, you know plaque is inside your vessels in your heart, we can tell you exactly whether it's soft plaque or hard plaque. We can tell you what your risk is. And if you think about it, uh, the WHO just recently published a study that said that there's not a single diagnostic test that we do in cardiac screening today that has made any difference in the rate of disease or the rate of death. So, Dr. Shapiro, if you could, and this was a really important insight, and Tony and I write about this in our book, the old way of 
of, I mean, listen, again, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to protect ourselves against heart disease in our 50s and 60s, cancer in our 60s and 70s, and Alzheimer's after that, right? I mean, yes, we've, we've learned that lesson in the last few days. And then there's therapeutics to buy you additional decades, hopefully. And your goal is to buy additional decades that buy you the additional decades as breakthroughs. On the cancer side, it's Grail and full body MRI. That should catch almost everything. But on the heart disease side, Dr. Shapiro, the old way of doing it versus the new way. Sure, thank you, Peter. So about 20 years ago, I completed my fellowship in cardiology here in New York. Part of uh, what we were doing was looking inside coronary arteries with catheters called angiograms. And we started looking at plaque called vulnerable plaque. It's like a volcano that can rupture. We just don't know when it's going to rupture. And when it ruptures, we have a heart attack. Some people could have massive heart attacks. Some people could have mild heart attacks. We actually measured the temperature of these plaques. And we actually put more catheters in there to look at the feeling of the plaque called palpography. Over the last 20 years, nothing has changed until two months ago. And can, you, can we just mention the idea of what a calcium score is and why calcified plaques are not bad? Sure, so, so up until two months ago, everyone was looking at the calcium score. If you had a high score, it means you're in bad shape. It turns out now with this new technology, it's not about blood flow, it's not about risk factors of heart disease, it's not about the new biomarkers that you see every day, this new heart biomarker. No one's really looked at the disease until now. Now we can actually see the plaque and see the type of plaque. And it's color coded using artificial intelligence. We've got it on the slide up behind you. Yeah. So if it's blue, it means it's full of calcium and it's stable, it's like cemented and it won't rupture. If it's yellow, it could rupture. If it's red, it will rupture. The question is, when is it going to rupture? So we have time to convert all that yellow and red plaque to blue stable plaque. Blue meaning high calcium. So now uh, the goal is to calcify that plaque using new primary prevention therapies that we can uh, give you. Some of them are injections twice a year now to reduce your, your plaque by 50%. And this is coming out in a few months. There's other other uh, medicines that are available today. We're going to talk, uh, Peter's on some of them. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But now we can actually convert the unstable plaque to stable plaque by building up calcium. So when we look at a calcium score, the higher the score may not necessarily be bad, it may be more stable. So let me slow that down a little bit. I went, I remember doing my, my CTA, my calcium angiogram. And I've done it every few years. And my calcium score was low and then started to increase. And my, I remember my past cardiologist, because George is my new cardiologist, said, man, you know, you need to be going on these statins, you need to be going doing this, you need to be doing that. And we, I went then and did the Clearly CTA. Uh, it's an incredible company, super excited by it. And what I realized was when they ran my calcium uh, my, my clearly, my CCTA through their AI, that the amount of soft vulnerable plaque I had was extremely low. And it changed my perspective uh, about my cardiac risk, which is my number one risk, right? So I'm monitoring my number one risk because my dad had cardiac disease. Um, and you can see here the AI program, actually, it flattens out the arteries, it looks at the makeup and such, and so that is what I will now do on, on an annual basis. So if you look at, if you look at the, the slide, the lower picture that's yellow with that red dot, it looks like a donut. The center is the lumen. This patient was read as normal coronary arteries, totally normal. So now he goes home, does whatever he wants to do, doesn't realize that he has significant disease this will rupture inside the vessel. So he's read as a normal artery, but he has significant plaque. So we get a total plaque score, and then we find out what type of plaque is it, the dangerous plaque or the stable plaque. And that's what you need to know. This starts at age five, believe it or not. At age 20, it could be significant. Why wait till we're 50 to get chest pain? Let's start working on it now when we're younger. Does that make sense to folks? And it's, it's a completely new AI-driven uh, capability. Um, what you're going to learn is that you can do this clearly CTA and the MRI at one of the Fountain Life centers, but we've created a digitized platform that allows you to do it 
at any center, but upload the data to the Fountain Life AIs. We'll talk about that. Anything you want to add on this, on this slide? If you just look at the left, it gives you a number. That's the total plaque score. Anything above 250 is significant, but not deadly. We can now control it and work on it. The goal is to rescan you every year, depending on your severity of disease, or every two years if you have less severe disease, every three years if you have mild disease. It's just to get it before it gets you. And, and I think it's important to understand that one out of every, 50% uh, of people who have their first heart attack never make it to the hospital. They or die, pull they this, die. Pull it's a huge mortality this. rate. Okay. So one in four people has cardiac disease, it's the number one killer, not only in the United States, but worldwide. And the reality is we haven't got any forward. decent screening tests for it. So once again, by the time you make it to the cardiologist office, it's, pretty, it's late in the, in the disease progression. The goal, just like neurodegenerative disease, we want to catch these things before you are showing symptoms and start that reversal process, which the technology is available for now. So, uh, you know, the upload, your annual upload is about 150 gigabytes of data. Uh, and do you want to speak to, so that's the diagnostic side. The diagnostic side, again, your full body MRI, brain, brain vasculature, your clearly CTA, your GRAIL test, your genetic test your microbiome, the stuff you're going through here, right? Uploaded every year, sometimes more frequently than every year. And then the other side is performance and recovery. Can you speak to that, Bill? Yeah, sure. So there's a lot of things we do in the Fountain Life Center. Number one, once we know your baseline, then we want to hormonally optimize you, nutritionally optimize you, and then physiologically, using other modalities, optimize you. So some of you have heard of pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. We are real believe, big believers in that. Any of you have seen the biocharger that Tony uses frequently, there's a huge health effect of that. In addition, we have um, you know, compression therapies, chiropractic and physical medicine, some of which we're, we have available for you guys here today. Uh, and some of you had Matt and, and Angela working on you all week. Matt heads this area for us, and we bring in athletic programs protocols that he's been using with professional athletes. Matt takes care of 450 pro athletes from around the country, so we bring those recovery protocols and optimization, optimization protocols into the Fountain Life Centers so that you can optimize yourself even further. So there's a whole myriad of these things, and some of these are mentioned up here, uh, from chiropractic to uh, you know, compression therapies, cryotherapy, things of this nature. So the idea is to continue on optimization. What all of these technologies have in common is that they actually decrease inflammation. And the one thing we keep hearing year, and, uh, year I mean, day after day in this conference, it's low-grade inflammation. It is putting you at risk for epigenetic changes and, and, and the advanced aging process. So anything we can do to slow that is, is critical. Hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps get the word out. And if you love the content that I talk about, present about, please subscribe to this channel. And one more thing, don't forget, please give me your comments down below. I love seeing what you think about all of this. We put a lot of time into it with incredible people and would love to have your feedback.